benchmark what you are doing, even if the dollar has no, has no input or has no relevance to your input cost, but you now say, ah, it is the dollar. I have been waiting for prices to come down this year. And people are telling me, ah, it can't come down because I bought the goods at last year's dollar exchange rate. And I said, ah, if that is the case, I thought last year you were putting replacement cost. That the reason why my prices are going up is because dollar is dropping, so I'm anticipating that. Now that it has reversed, we are not getting the, uh, the discount. So these are all the issues. But in looking at the environment, Nigeria is well in tune into the global economy. So therefore, what happens globally has an impact on what we do. In particular, 2016 has defined a number of uh, issues. We call it political populism. Everybody is now being popular. Everybody wants to move to the West. But guess what's happening in the West? They are putting up what? Barriers. They are putting up barriers. It's not so easy now to say, I'm going to live here and go to the US, I'm going to the UK. You can see the language that is coming up is what? We are looking in America, is now America what? America first. Therefore, issue of mass immigration. And Nigeria has a large population. We believe our biggest export is our people. The question is, if you're not going to go through the Libyan route and across the Mediterranean, there are very few legal ways in which you are going to cross. So what that means, therefore, is that we have to look what? Look a bit more inwards. Being an Andrew is not so much a viable option for most uh, uh, people. Keep, a, keep an eye on what's going on in China. They're moving from an export-led growth. They're trying to increase what? Domestic what? Consumption. You should be asking, what does that mean? When a country with such a large population now says you want to stimulate domestic what? Consumption. Therefore, the roles might just be replaced. It can now be reversed. Should we now be selling into China rather than buying what from China? How do you see that? Growth is slowing. So therefore, everybody is now becoming much more circumspect. And therefore, immigration is not really an option. So as the world slows down, you now look, like a country, you look at a country like Nigeria. Large population. Large potential. And I think the challenge has always been how do we translate this, our potential, into a reality where all of us can really get benefit uh, uh, from it. To say Nigeria is in a recession is no longer news. Every business has really uh, felt it. In theory, 2016 was the first year of a recession in 25 years. Recession usually is marked by high unemployment, stagnant wages, fall in retail sales lack of consumer confidence. The question I ask people is, all these factors, I think they've been around for some time. So this official definition of recession, do you get it? I tell people that what we had was recession of the elite. And when something happens to the elite, they try and make sure that it has, well, it goes around everybody. But some of these issues, So the way I look at it is that the last recession officially was 1991, 25-year gap. But I can tell you Nigerians have been in recession throughout that, what, that whole period. So that's why I twinkled a bit with the topic I was given. So when I said, what is new? The, what we should be asking ourselves is, how do we ensure we don't fall into the, what, the next what, recession? What do we need to do? So as I address the entrepreneurs, I'll also at the same time while I give you the opportunities, talk about the opportunities, I'll also be looking at our policy environment. What do we need to do? And in particular, I always tell people, each person must come up with his own signpost. When I say signpost, it's very good to listen. Right here, I'm talking, I'm speaking, I'm a speaker, and you're listening. The other thing you also have to do is also what to see. Open your eyes and look around and ask yourself, what is saying and what I'm saying? Is there what? Consistency. So as we tell you, these are the policies. You should ask yourself, as I'm looking around, am I seeing or are things turning out the way they should? Then in particular, you must also make use of your senses, your intuition. Therefore, what I'm seeing is my common sense telling me that there's a consistency. What's my common sense telling me? Because this issue of entrepreneurship is quite key. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. That's the truth. Not everybody can be. If it's related to intelligence, it's a different thing. I've met many intelligent people that have started businesses that have failed. So not everybody can be what? Can be an entrepreneur. But we are hoping for those who really will start entrepreneurial businesses. They will start businesses that will stand the test of time. So we have to look at our environment. What's the positive side? I'm a bit optimistic. 
170 plus million people. We never know what the exact numbers are, yeah? but 170, but plenty of people. <laughs> In terms of uh, demography, 43% 0 to 14 years, 53% 15 to 64 years. Therefore, the bulk of these people are what? Young. It's a large economy. Make no mistake about it. It is a very large economy. Officially, the 41st uh, largest uh, economy. I'm not so sure with the devaluation whether we are number one or number two, but let's even take it. We are number one in, uh, in Africa. There are also some samples you should watch out for. Large urbanization, rural urban drift. Therefore, Nigeria is aggregating a large number of people in selected places, Lagos being the largest. But quite a number of cities have population in excess of uh, millions. Diversified economy. I think the biggest myth, and I think we are moving away from it, People say Nigeria, they talk about an oil economy. Nigeria is not an oil economy. Oil and gas is only probably 8% of uh, GDP. It's really more of an agrarian economy rather than an oil economy. But we've allowed oil to be allowed some of our, our judgments. The key is all about diversification. I will talk about that. And in particular, if you're an entrepreneur, you should say, where should I be looking at? I'll also look, give you some ideas. The last five years, between 2011 and let's say 2016, because that's where we have the statistics. The fastest growing sectors of this economy are as follows. The largest, information and communication, real estate, education, entertainment, professional and technical services, trade, the manufacturing comes after that. Now, let's now narrow down. The last one year, 2016, what are the largest growing areas? Construction, agri, education again, entertainment, information, and professional services. So the question you should be asking yourself is, if I'm to position myself in this economy, where should I position myself? Should I be looking at industries of the past, environments of the past, oil and gas, government, Abuja, that has turned out to be areas that have not grown but look at areas that have grown significantly over the last five years. Even in the, area of, in the year of recession, there are some areas that have had significant growth. And if I look at Nigeria, it appears to be the areas in which you'll also have growth going uh, forward. So it's quite key. So this new environment, that I call it unfolding environment, has to be an environment in which we are looking at areas that are outside your traditional extractive industries, it has to be areas outside your normal R. If I want to be rich, all I have to do is find a way of getting to Abuja, do my hustle, and I'll come back to Lagos and be a rich man. Like I said, they are aggregating what? Large numbers of people in cities. The question you should be asking yourself is, what can I sell? What service?